Perform AC-DC analysis for the common collector amplifier. Beta equals 300 and early voltage VA equals 120 volts. If you need any more examples on how this general process works for simpler single transistor amplifiers, I highly suggest you visit my previous video, which I just tagged above, which covers the general process as well and is a little simpler to understand than this configuration. So, under DC conditions, we know that capacitors are open. This means that anything to the left of this capacitor here is null under DC conditions, as well as anything to the right of this resistor. Knowing this, we need to still find our Thevenin equivalent resistance as well as voltage since we have two biased resistors here, meaning that rotating the 15 volt source uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise, we can then draw the 300 kilo ohm resistor followed by the connected 100 kilo ohm resistor to ground. And that is everything to the left of this BJT. So we can now add the BJT. We don't have to worry about anything above since we're only doing KVL in the lower half. We don't need to worry about anything to the right of here. So all we have is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So to find the equivalent Thevenin resistance of 300 kilo ohms and 100 kilo ohm resistors, all you have to do is put them in parallel, since under AC conditions, they're technically both connected to ground as well as the same potential. So R Thevenin equals 300 kilo ohms in parallel with 100 kilo ohms which in the calculator gives out 75 kilo ohm resistance. For the equivalent voltage, we need to do essentially voltage division across this 100 kilo ohm resistor, since this potential is actually what's being amplified, not what is across this 300 kilo ohm resistor. So all we have to do is, again, voltage division, 100k over 100k plus 300k, times the voltage provided, 15 volts, which gives you a new voltage of 3.75 volts. Now, redrawing the circuit, we have 3.75 volts attached to this new resistance of 75 kilo ohms. And we can go straight to the BJT, which still has this 10 kilo ohm resistor down here. We can now perform KVL. So this equation would be 3.75 volts equals 75 kilo ohms times the current going through here, which is IB, or through the base of the BJT, plus 0.7 volts, which is the amount of voltage required to go from the base to the emitter, plus 10 kilo ohms times IE, which is going from the emitter. And as you know, IE equals beta plus 1 IB. And we know that uh, beta is given to be 300, so it would be 301 times IB. That's it. So plugging that in here, so we have only one variable, IB, instead of two variables, we have 301 times IB. Simplifying this by one step, we can subtract both sides by 0 0.7 volts, which would give us 3.05 volts, equaling, as well as uh, factoring out IB, so IB times 75E3, which is the same thing as times 10 to the third ohms, plus 301 times 10 E3 ohms. And dividing this on both sides to isolate IB, let me just write that out here real quick. We get our current IB equals just about one microamp, or one times 10 to the negative six amps. This is the first parameter we need. However, we still need a few more to sufficiently perform AC analysis, that being R pi for starters. I'll just write that over here. R pi equals 
Vt over IB, where Vt is thermal voltage of 26 millivolts over IB, which we just calculated to be 1 E negative 6 amps. We find that R pi equals 26 kilo ohms. We need transconductance GM. I'll fit that over here. GM equals IC over VT, where again VT is thermal voltage. So we still need to find IC. We can roughly estimate that IC is equal to IE plus minus a very small margin. And using that assumption, we could substitute IC for IE, which is about 300 times 1 microamp, or alternatively, 0 0.3 milliamps, which would be 0 0.3 E negative 3 amps, over the normal 26 millivolts. GM is therefore 0 0.012 semen. Last but not least, we have RO, which is early voltage VA over IC. That, again, is given to be 120 volts over IC, which was 300 milliamps, or 0 0.3 E negative 3 amps. And RO ends up equaling 400 kilo ohms. This is everything we need to do for DC analysis. So now we can move on to AC analysis. Now under AC conditions, we know that the capacitors are now shorted. This means that we now have to reintroduce the voltage source that's being perturbed, as well as all the remaining resistors around the capacitors. So let's begin by drawing the model. On the left side here, we have our VS, and we have our source resistance, RS, equaling 10 kilo ohms, right over here, so everything's still around the same. However, now let's use our new Thevenin resistance that we found in the previous section to be 75 kilo ohms. Moving on, we now have our pi. which we found to be 26 kilo ohms. And we can connect the bottom potentials here. Now let's add the dependent current source that is in all these models. GMV pi. And we add our last resistance RO, which is always to the right of the BJT, top right which we found to be 400 kilo ohms. Now, you may be tempted by default to add the new resistor like this in parallel, like the load. However, we see that unlike our previous example, the output voltage that's being measured is actually on the emitter side of the BJT, looking at base collector emitter, before it was on the collector. So this changes the pi model a bit, since we know that here, this is the base on this side, this is the collector, and the bottom is the emitter. So, using that train of thought, we can see that since both of these resistors, with this capacitor shorted, both touch the top of the emitter, so we can connect them like this. And both of them, fortunately, go to ground. So this model kind of looks a little weird, but you get used to this process. So we can see that RL equals 3 kilo ohms over here, and the RE, we can call it capital E, for emitter equals 10 kilo ohms. This is the complete AC equivalent circuit for the single transistor amplifier. Now, we are requested to find R in, R out, and the overall amplification of the circuit. So this formula is gonna be a little weirder than the ones I usually do. There are multiple ways of expressing it, but for now, it's okay to include RL in this particular case for this common collector configuration. So R in equals the following. R thevenin in parallel with R pi plus R e in parallel with R l 
times beta plus 1. Now the derivation for this formula is a little weird. However, you can kind of piece a couple things together since we know that RE and RL are in parallel and they're only experiencing the emitter current. So you need to multiply by beta plus 1 to get to the base current. And we can see that R thevenin is in parallel with all of this and we're not including source resistance yet. And by plugging these numbers in, we get Rn equals 75 kilo ohms in parallel with 26 kilo ohms plus 10 kilo ohms in parallel with 3 kilo ohms times 301. And that is everything. So Rn, after putting all of this into a calculator, equals 68 kilo ohms. Moving on to R out, I'll do that over here. There are two different ways to derive the formula for R out. We will be using the one in which it does not include our lowercase e, since that requires another little calculation that I can't honestly bother with. And this one is also pretty weird. It would be Re the resistor by the emitter, in parallel with the following, using the square brackets, r pi plus r signal, or rs, in parallel again with rth, everything will be over beta plus 1. Don't worry on trying to understand this formula 100%. For the analog course, all that you need to do is just have this either memorized or usually they'll give you a formula sheet for this. But I found this to be the most effective formula. I'll definitely cover other ones in the future, but for now, this is definitely satisfactory. It's all equivalent. Moving down here, we see that R out equals 10 kilo ohms in parallel with r pi, which is 26 kilo ohms, plus 10 kilo ohms in parallel with 75 kilo ohms, all over 301. Putting this in a calculator, you get a fairly small output resistance of 114.37 ohms. And that is your answer for that one. Lastly, you're gonna like this. AV for this type of circuit is one volt per volt. That is because this configuration of common collector is known as a voltage buffer, or in other words, it doesn't actually affect any of the amplification of the voltage going through it. It's just good for buffering it with a high input resistance and a low output resistance. Well, I hope you have a better idea of how common collector analysis works. I will tack on one extra thing in which AV can be derived for this, even though it more often than not is just about 1 volt per volt. Though kind of seeing it like V out over V in, we can derive AV to be RE in parallel with RL times beta plus 1 over R pi plus Again, RE in parallel with RL times beta plus 1. As I said, this is pretty much the output resistance over the input resistance, or rather the voltage being taken across them. And plugging that in, you get 10K in parallel with 3K times 301 over 26K ohms plus. 10k again in parallel with 3k times 301, giving you an AV of 0 0.964, which you can consider to be close enough to 1 volt per volt, thus proving our assumption over here. Good luck, and I'll see you in the next video.